Well, hello and welcome to Ask Us Anything About Wearing a Mask from Penn State Health. I'm Scott Gilbert. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the 75th edition of Ask Us Anything About here on Facebook from Penn State Health. As we mark the occasion, we've changed the look of our interviews, as you might have noticed, and this is in order to keep everybody safe, because as we return from a bit of a hiatus, you'll notice we're using a platform that allows us to talk with our subject matter experts from a distance. But as with the previous 74 programs, we, of course, welcome your questions throughout the interview. Today, the topic is wearing a mask with the spread of COVID-19 still far from under control. Masking is among the key steps we can take to limit the spread of this highly contagious disease. It's also the subject of a recent order from Dr. Rachel Levine, Pennsylvania's Secretary of Health. We're gonna tackle the do's and don'ts of wearing a mask and take as many of your questions as possible with Dr. Jessica Erickson. She's a pediatric infectious disease physician, also an epidemiologist at Penn State Children's Hospital. Dr. Erickson, thanks so much. It's good to have you with us today. I'd like to start with the different types of masks that are out there. You know, there are surgical masks, there are N95s, there are handmade cloth masks. Does it make a difference the type of mask someone wears? Yes, it does. So the N95 masks are going to be difficult for most people to wear for long periods of time. In general, we still want to be saving these masks for our frontline healthcare providers because they are still in fairly short supply and they're really more than is necessary for most everyday interactions for most people. The surgical masks are uh, lightweight, easier to wear, they're certainly more abundant, but for everyday use across the whole population, they're, they're probably gonna end up, um, they would be at risk of being in short supply too. So for everyday use, the cloth masks are becoming the, the go-to mask. But these really vary quite a lot depending on what kind of material they're made out of. It's made of a pretty tightly woven fabric. If you can see through it, it's not gonna keep the germs uh, out of the air, which is really the whole point of the mask. So for everyday use, either a surgical mask or a, a uh, cloth mask that's made of a sturdy, tightly woven fabric like cotton, um, quilting fabric is, is going to be the, the best bet. Jordan, sure, people may say, well, you know, I really want to wear something that both protects me, but is also breathable. So are some of those more breathable type of masks or fabrics just as effective as something that might be less so? So it really depends on, on how many the, the layers are. And for the most part, the answer is no. The, for the most part, you don't want it to be breathable in, in the sense, you want air to be able to get through it, of course, but you, you really do want what some of those tighter woven fabrics. Wilting cotton is gonna be you know, the best fabric to use, something that's more like a spandex or a stretchy kind of athletic wear type fabric is not going to be as protective as, as a sturdier fabric is. So in terms of where to wear a mask, I think there are some places it's obvious we need one, right? When we go into, say, a store or a business, and then places where it's perhaps more obvious that we don't need it. Like here I am alone in my own home, in my home office. I'm not wearing one now for obvious reasons. But then there are some other types of areas where people may wonder, should I wear a mask? So let's go through a few of those. How about, let's say I go outside to take a walk in my neighborhood. Should I be wearing one then if I walk down the street and might be walking by other people occasionally? I would say probably not. It depends on how densely populated your particular neighborhood is. Where you're going to be people on the sidewalk or a bit of time, then wearing a mask would be a good idea. If you live in a more rural or suburban neighborhood where you might pass one person the whole time you're out walking, then it's and or there's room for you away from the other people that you're passing, then a mask is probably not necessary when you're just outside walking around. 
You're watching Ask Us Anything About Wearing a Mask from Penn State Health. It's good to be back on with our programs after a brief hiatus. You may have noticed here we have a new platform we're using to allow us to continue to connect with our subject matter experts about a range of important topics. Today is with Dr. Jessica Erickson. She's a pediatric infectious disease physician, also an epidemiologist at Penn State Children's Hospital. We're glad to have her. We're glad to have you watching. So feel free to um, add your questions to the comment field below this Facebook post and we can pose them live. Um, Dr. Erickson, we're talking about the various places when people should and shouldn't wear a mask. So um, what about some of the other places that you know may, you know, people may not think of, but they should definitely be mindful uh, of wearing a mask when out in public? I think you should definitely take one along, have it in your pocket or your purse ready to wear. If you're going to, there may or may not be a lot of people around a place like the zoo and wearing a mask is the uh, kind and um, you get there gardens then um, it would probably be using that way um, buying your ticket when you're interacting with people in the gift shop then that mask should go back on uh, for the protection of those clerks that that you're interacting with some people may say, you know, who should wear a mask? Is it just something that older people should wear? Should just younger people wear one to protect older people? Or should everybody wear one, essentially? Well, I would say everyone essentially should. The, the main exceptions to that are people who are um, unable to take the mask off by themselves. So young children, we're generally saying younger than two years old, uh, people who are have some kind of d disability where they would be unable to take the mask off in an emergency, those people should not be wearing masks or people who have a significant respiratory problem like um, COPD, emphysema, a breathing problem where you know even the, the teeny tiny, generally insignificant amount of airflow restriction, you get a big deal. And that's, um, that's gonna be a, a pretty small um, percent of people. Most people should wear a mask. And we, we need to remember that the point of wearing a mask is to protect other people. Uh, you get a little bit of benefit in protection for yourself, but the main point of wearing a mask is to protect the store clerk who has cancer, the, uh, the neighbor boy who has asthma, the uh, grandmother who has So um, realizing that you don't know the risk that those people around you might be experiencing because you're not wearing a mask. Even if you're a low risk person who probably won't have a problem if you get COVID, wearing a mask keeps you from accidentally giving it to your friends and neighbors for whom it would be a, a significant problem. We wanna welcome you to and your questions to the comment field here, just as Joanna has done. She's asking us, what is the best way to clean reusable face masks? So especially like those cloth masks like we talked about before, Dr. Erickson, what do you recommend? Really, the best thing is to wash them in the washing machine, you know, with your towels, with your underwear, uh, generally on, on hot water, but using a good detergent. In general, it's good to wash after each use because you may have encountered germs from other people in the air that are now on the outside of that mask. So get yourself a set, you know, five or ten of them that match all your favorite outfits and then, you know, just uh, every time you're going out or each day, throw it in the wash like you would your underwear at the end of the day. Great advice. Um, you know, when it comes to outside versus inside, is there a different is there an enhanced risk of spread inside versus outside where say the wind may be blowing and we might be in a more open space? And is that why maybe there are some differences in some of the guidelines that are out there from, from federal and state authorities? 
Yes, that's absolutely the case. So in a building or, you know, if, if we take it to the extreme, like an airplane where that same air is in that room, so to speak, just sitting there for, for a couple hours, you know, eventually everyone's breathing all that same air. In a small room, that's, that would similarly be the case. And as the room gets bigger, and the air gets turned over by the air conditioner or by windows, that's going to dilute out a lot of those germs. So then we take it to the extreme of going out. Germs are going to be blown away by the wind before they have a chance to be breathed in by the next person. You also have the extra benefit of sunlight, at least this time of year. And, you know, sunlight acts as a great disinfectant with that um, you know the UV light, so we get kind of those two benefits of, of being outside. Sure, um, some people who are rather skeptical of the most recent guidelines for wearing masks might point to the, I guess you'd say, early days of COVID nineteen, February, March, around that time, when the guidance seemed to be different. When it seemed like authorities were saying no need to get a mask, just leave the masks to the to the healthcare workers. Um, but now the guidance is different. It, perhaps it was because aerosol and droplets were first thought not to be a big deal. But can you talk about how that thinking has evolved and why people who may be skeptical of the new guidance should adhere to it? Sure. I, uh, in full disclosure, I was a mass skeptic uh, myself. The um, We've had a few studies looking at show that mask wearing doesn't seem to make a big difference. But as we've learned more and more about uh, coronavirus and, and COVID-19, uh, it's pretty clear that masks do make a big difference in spreading it um, among populations. You know, when we look at like a whole state, for instance, states that wear masks are doing better. C countries that wear masks are doing better than, than countries that don't. Um, and you know, I learned more about how this virus is spread from one person to another. It's become very clear that masks are, are one of the most effective ways we have of preventing its spread. So from a former uh, mass skeptic, uh, it, it's really the, the best thing that, that we can do at this point. And, and there's really no reason not to wear a mask. You're watching Ask Us Anything About Wearing a Mask from Penn State Health. Thanks so much for the comments and the questions. Keep those coming. And uh, including there are some very nice comments uh, from for, for you, uh, Dr. Erickson. So I think you're going to want to go in and read those later. You have some fans in the comments section here. We welcome your questions. So feel free again to add those in the comment field. And we'll pose those to Dr. Erickson here as we try to get out the right information here about the importance of wearing a mask uh, to help mitigate the spread of uh, COVID-19. Um, when we talk about, uh, let's say, I was at the mall over the weekend. I was at the grocery store over the weekend, and nearly everyone I saw had masks on. But a lot of people were doing this. They were wearing them like this, below the nose. And so what is the importance of covering not only the mouth, but also also the nose and, and making sure it's high enough? Is it effective still if, it, if it's even just over the mouth? So, so wearing a mask over your mouth is going to be much more effective than not wearing a mask at all. That's going to take care of droplets that would get into the air from a pocket. If you're the sort of person that when you talk, you kind of spit a bit, that, that's going to keep those droplets from your mouth from getting into the air. But of course, you can get droplets into the air from your nose, especially when you sneeze or you know you get a little bug in your nose and you have to sniff um, those sorts of things. So wearing a mask over your nose and your mouth is going to be the most effective um, for situations where that mask is doing a little bit to keep you from getting germs from other people. Having it over your nose is, is also going to be more helpful for your own personal benefit to you. Um, 
So if over your nose and mouth, wearing a mask over your mouth is better than nothing. But really it's better for, for everyone if, if you can wear it over both your nose and your mouth the, the way they're designed to be worn. Sure thing. We have a question from Sandra now. She's asking because she has behind the ear hearing aids, would a face shield pass for the mask rule? In other words, you know, would if she was to wear, I believe she's talking about the kind of plastic face shield that comes out and about uh, around the face. Um, can you talk about the protection afforded by a, a face shield versus a mask and what the difference is there? Yeah, that's a great question. So wearing a face shield gives you doesn't do. Um, However, face shields, it's easier for droplets to come around the face shield and then get to your face and mouth or similarly from you for your uh, cough to go out around the bottom or the sides of the face shield. So that's one problem with it. The next, it's actually pretty difficult to wear a face shield or um, they generally fit around the head like this and um, you know they're kind of more prone to move up and down they're, they're a little less um, comfortable for, for term wear it's harder to keep them clean and maintain them over over a long time where the cloth masks for instance you can just throw in the washer and use them repeatedly. So one thing that you could try it would be getting a um, like a headband. There are some very nice ones made of you know spandex, some stretchy material, sports bands, and then put some buttons on those. You can even buy these sorts of headbands now. And then you can put the, the mask straps on those buttons on your headband, or if you have a little hat like I have here, put the, put them on there, and then that mask mask attached to your head without having to have it go right behind your ears. So that, that would be one, one thing to try. Um, certainly a face yeah, shield that, that, that's great. is better than nothing. So it, it kind of depends. Sure. Sure. It makes, makes good sense. We welcome your questions for Dr. Jessica Erickson. Please feel free to continue to add those in the comment field here below this Facebook post here on Ask Us Anything About Wearing a Mask from Penn State Health. How about storing a mask? You know, whether it is a uh, cloth mask or a surgical mask, what's the best way to store it when I'm not wearing it? Um, I know I shouldn't just shove it in my pocket, right? Yeah, so your main goals are going to be to keep the mask clean so that then when you put it on the, your face the next time, you're not putting germs or dirt then up on your face. So a good strategy is to have like a paper sandwich bag where you can slide that, the mask in where, while you're storing it. Um, I've, I've also seen like my brother has this nice little key rack next to the door where they have their clean mask hanging so they're ready. To, to grab when they when they leave the house. Um, so your main goal is going to be something that will keep it clean and dry till, till you're ready to use it. So there's a lot of information out there, especially on social media, about wearing a mask. And there are even full memes out there about listing the supposed dangers of wearing a mask. That's why I think it's so important that people get information from the right place. Place. So do you have any recommendations as to the best places where people can turn the most reputable sources for information about this that you know, may or may not include social media? Yeah, so the CDC is a good place to go. And I know that uh, you've already mentioned that they've kind of gone back and forth with the mask advice. But I see that really as a reflection of their willingness to um, you know, incorporate new information. And these new guidelines shouldn't really be taken as, um, you know, a negative, but as new information is coming out, they're responding to that with, uh, with new recommendations based on, on the best and, and most current information that we have available. So that would be one place. Um, you know, most hospitals have some information that's 
uh, written for the public and, and is easy to understand. Um, and then some of the uh, health organizations for whatever type of person you, you happen to be. For instance, I'm a pediatrician, so we have the American Academy of Pediatrics, the AAP, and they certainly put out a lot of good information for parents and school teachers, anyone who interacts with young children. And there are similar corresponding um, agencies focused on older adults, people with cancer, you know, varieties of, of groups. What about the importance of wearing a mask in conjunction with other safety steps? I mean, things like social distancing and hand hygiene, I mean, those are still important, right? Absolutely, yes. So none of these measures is 100% effective. So if you hear somebody say, hey, I was wearing a mask, I know somebody who wore a mask and they still got sick, um, you're, you're not wrong because none of these, the six foot rule comes from the, uh, when a person is talking or coughs, most of their droplets will usually not go farther than six feet. But most of the time usually includes that sometimes they'll go further than that. So wearing a mask uh, and also trying to stay six feet away from people kind of lets you take advantage of the benefits of both of those ways of protecting and, and your loved ones. And good hand washing when you're touching things, when you're touching things at the store, you know, the, the best way to handle that is to be washing your hands on a regular basis. And certainly before touching your face or putting your mask on or off. Sure thing. Um, are there, you know, there, there is some supposed information out there about masks um, restricting people's ability to breathe. So you know, there's some things out there about it, it can reduce your oxygen intake. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it can reduce your oxygen intake. It can reduce, you know, your ability to breathe. It, it can actually be more harmful than good. We know that those are not true on their face, but are, are, what, what can you say to, uh, to, to, to people who have seen these things, especially again on social media and are wondering, wait, am I going to have lower oxygen amounts in my bloodstream? Am I going to actually do some harm to my body by wearing a mask at the same time that I'm trying to protect others? So the, the first thing I would like to draw people's attention to is surgeons who've been wearing these masks occupationally you know, for days on end, for hours on end, you know, there are occasionally surgeries that last 30, 40 hours and your surgeon is wearing a mask that whole time. And they are not getting uh, low oxygen to their brain that's making them do your surgery less well. So I, I think that's an excellent piece of evidence that these masks do not restrict airflow um, in a person who has even close to normal lungs. The, the only caveat to that is someone who is just barely getting enough oxygen in their life. Someone who needs oxygen um, all the time, who has emphysema, some breathing problem that's so severe that even an immeasurable amount of restriction with a mask could make it more difficult for them to breathe. Those people should not wear a mask. For anyone who is even close to normal, they do not restrict your oxygen level. You know, your surgeon doing a good job after wearing one for years is, is clear evidence of, of that. Sounds good. We have a question now from Steph. She was asking about this mask like I held up earlier here. How many times can you wear one of these surgical masks like this, like the one that I had mm -hmm. on or how long should you use it before discarding it? Because it's true, they are disposable. That's right. So in general, those are single use masks. So it would you can't wash them. So it would be best to wear those for one outing on one occasion and then to, to throw them away. If you use them for several days on end, then the material can actually start to degrade where they're gonna be less protective. For instance, if you're keeping it in your car where it's hot or, or um, handling it quite a lot. Um, but you could probably wear it you know, for a week or so and, and they're gonna be doing some good for you. Um, so it, 
it's one of those things where there's the best case scenario, which would be to use it one time and throw it away. And, you know, what's kind of practical, which is to, to use it very carefully where you're only handling the strings so that you're not contaminating your hands and the mask every time you take it on and off. In that case, you could use it reasonably for, you know, a, a few days. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, you're watching Ask Us Anything About Wearing a Mask from Penn State Health. We're getting some great advice today from Dr. Jessica Erickson. She's an epidemiologist, also an infectious disease specialist at Penn State Children's Hospital. So we welcome you to add your questions to the comment field as we kind of wrap things up here, because we have been on for a while providing some great information, and I appreciate Dr. Erickson's time here today. Um, one thing I had a question about was accessibility issues with regard to a mask like this. When someone has a mask on, you can't see what they're, you, you can't read their lips. And for some people, it's, it's very important that they're able to read lips because they may be hearing impaired. Um, have you seen the window masks? And you know, perhaps that, that's a good solution if people have that concern maybe. I haven't seen those, but but that's an exciting innovation. Um, you're you're absolutely right that all these things, you know, when we when we try to do something to make uh, the lives of everyone better, sometimes that has unintended consequences, like like causing problems for people who use the brain to communicate. Um, so I haven't seen those, but I'd be excited to learn more about them. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Erickson. It's been great talking with you. We'll let you get back to work and we appreciate your time today. We also appreciate everybody else's time and questions. If you have additional questions, even if you're watching this on playback, feel free to add those to the comment field below this Facebook post and we can still pose those to Dr. Erickson and get you some answers uh, written as a response. Thank you, Dr. Erickson. And thank you very much for watching. Ask us anything about wearing a mask from Penn State Health.